The girls are real sad because I left them inside during the garden tour. There's Lucky, looking very emotional. And there's Harley, our new girl, looking very hopeful. All right, folks, it's the first weekend of July and it is time for the July garden tour. Um, I'm gonna stage this out as best I can. Tomorrow, I, on Sundays, by the time I upload this video, it should be Sunday, but on Sundays, I usually do a garden tour with my mom. And that's actually how this channel got started, was that I was doing tours with her every Sunday. And then my mother-in-law said, hey, could you make videos for me so that I could see? And I was like, well, geez, I could do that too. And then I thought, you know what? If I made videos and I put them on YouTube, then all the people in my life that I care about, that I want to share my garden with can see it. So that's the energy behind this YouTube channel at the moment. And I'm so excited because July, at least here in Michigan, which is where I live is a zone 6B. July is when things have really had a chance to take off and the garden goes from feeling very sparsely planted to really filling out and looking glorious. So I have all kinds of stuff I want to show you today. As a reminder though, if you like my channel, if you want to keep getting updates regularly, please hit the like button and subscribe um, so that you get all of my updates. Some of them are going to be weird little shorts of me singing at my plants because I can't help it. But there's a lot going on in the garden right now and I want to share it all with you. So with that, like I said, please like and subscribe. And with that, let's get started with the July 2021 garden tour. Right. What you see ahead of you here is what I commonly refer to as my rose border. Um, it's been years in the making. When we first bought this house, it was mostly just hostas. In fact, you can see anchoring either side here are two gigantic hostas. Those came with the house. Um, and I keep them because they're glorious dinosaur-like creations um, with a nice little blue cast. Um, but what I added was my roses, and they're my pride and joy. The bummer, of course, you may notice, is that right now there's not a lot of rose action going on. That's because the show already happened, um, at least show number one. So all of these put out glorious blooms, but they are all done. Hopefully by the next time I do a tour or I'll try to do something in between to catch them, it is glorious. An ombre ah, of fragrant beauty. Um, but yeah, you can see there's guys, there's little buds coming up, new shoots. Oh, where's my finger? Little shoots. It's going to happen. But for right now, it's a little quiet. Um, what's really taken off are my plant bags, my owl's flower pouch pouches filled with petunias. Just to give you a reminder of what colors we have. Oh, let's see. Here's a good example of the contrast between two of the colors. We have purple royal velvet, which doesn't seem that purple. It might actually read a little pink. But then down here, by contrast, I'm trying to find a good, good way to show you the difference. They On camera, I feel like they're looking exactly the same, but it's supposed to be Carmine red, Carmine velour, which is supposed to be like a red with some deep sort of leaning towards pink. And then the royal purple is more, more as you might have guessed it, purple. Anyway, they're really starting to fill out. You can barely see the, plout, the plant, the flower pouches behind it, but you can see where it's hooked up here to the fence. My giant hostas, I think these are blue angel hostas. At least that's what they look like. Again, we got them with the house but they've been blooming like crazy. All right, the other big difference besides the petunias filling out that you might be able to see by this white and green variegation that's happened are my caladiums that I started from bulbs this year. This is, the variety is White Christmas. Um, again, I started them from bulbs and in the June garden tour, I'm pretty sure I said that I thought they were dead they hadn't even come up yet. I think they started to emerge from dormancy in mid-June, which feels super late when you've been waiting for um, your garden to grow all winter. Um, but the color, the variegation is just so refreshing. This green and white really pops. Um, so I am enjoying, 
I'm experimenting actually with putting them in between the roses. I haven't decided if I like it yet, in part because I like to keep space between my roses so that there's enough airflow. Um, just because if there's one thing that plant pathogens really love, it's moisture, I feel like, <laughs> at least for roses. So I haven't decided if I like this yet, but in the garden, everything is an experiment, <laughs> even this. Now, here's where I have a nice example of the third color in my petunias that I grew from seed this year, and that's the Blackberry Sophisticata, which, look at this, I mean, the drama. Ooh. Just love how deep a color that is. It looks almost black, but there's a little bit of purple to it. That's where the blackberry comes in. I'm definitely liking that the most of the three colors that I picked of the Royal Velvet Purple or Purple Royal Velvet, I can't remember. The purple, the Carmine Velour, and then the Blackberry Sophisticata. Sophisticata is winning. Um, and if you watched my um, Gaps in the Garden video part one, you would know that we had just filled out this top part with some plants we had scavenged, some petunia plants we had scavenged from the other plant pouches. Um, and as you can see, they are just taking off lovely. It's been a couple days. They've gotten some water, a chance to really root in. It looks like they're gonna be happy. So I bet, I bet that by the July garden tour, I mean, not July, this is July, oh my God. Time has lost all meaning. Um, by the August garden tour, these will be so filled out that like, like their brothers and sisters, you won't be able to see the plant pouches, except maybe from the side. Um, so I, every year I, I, I want to do petunias in the plant pouches every year, but I do want to vary up the color scheme. So when we get near the end of the fall and I start thinking about seeds for next year, I have to reassess this color scheme. There's a lot of, I know I'm getting off topic from the full tour, but I got to say like, the Blackberry Sophisticata is very striking, but between the red and the purple, the Carmine Velour and the Royal Purple, I don't see a big difference. We'll see what I think by the end of the summer though. All right, so here are my other experiments. <laughs> More tropical-like bulbs. Specifically here are two Tropicana Canna. So these are Canna bulbs that I started. I loved the variegation. What I don't love is how long it is taking them to actually get to any kind of height. So as a gardener, it's nice to experiment with starting things from seed or from bulbs because it can be more economical. You can get, you can get more bang for your buck because you can usually find that seeds and bulbs are cheaper than fully grown plants. But man, sometimes my patience wears out. And with canna, I think it has. It's just, they should already be super tall by now. Um, and they would be if they were growing in a greenhouse and had a head start. Oh well. Now, here's a real stunner though from my tropical bulb experiment. And that's this caladium, which is called Florida Cardinal. And it is just, wow. Vivid red veining, beautiful heart shape that you get with a lot of the caladiums. Um, but as you can see, like, it's already July and they're still unfurling and getting ready. Um, so patience is tried with these kind of things, <laughs> but they are beautiful. And then of course you, you may recall that um, I tried to fill in the gaps in my plant bags with petunias from the garden center and all they had were red ones. And when I got home, I realized I just couldn't stand that combo with my existing petunias. So I still need to find a home for them, but red is a classic color, obviously. So. I'll figure it out. Gardening, I find I enjoy the improvisation and finding spots for plants. We're gonna make it work. All right, there's more of my petunias looking beautiful and more of this giant. Like, let me use my my hand for, for scale. This, this, it's just a huge freaking plant, but it's so beautiful. All right, let's okay, the keep daylight's going. Daylight's getting away from me, but I'm gonna try to keep going. Um, next up, I want to show you the containers around my side door here that have just completely filled in now. Okay. Sad dogs for contrast or for size. They wish they were out here, but they would just be going wild. So, oh, look at you guys. Anyway, here are the containers that I do around my side door. I really love just collecting a bunch of different... <laughs> 
different planters just to get low and see all the whiskey barrels that I have accumulated. Um, but let me just kind of drape the side door in a lot of color without having to have any soil around it because the soil's in the containers. And boy, have the containers filled in by now. Um, and see the blueberry, <laughs> blueberry shortcake petunias are living their life. Black sweet potato vine, angelonium, and the Ver superbina rose, Persian shield, the Prince Tut papyrus grass and some more petunias. And then again, here's one of those times where the show ebbs and flows in the garden. And with salvia, salvia are quite striking, but they're at a point right now where they are between blooms. I should be trimming them back, but I'll get to it. Not during the garden video, let's keep going. But that's, that's how beautiful everything is filled in. Um, things can look really sparse when you start containers and it's really tough sometimes to keep it, keep it sparse and let it fill in. But boy, it's moments like these that it really pays off. All right, here's my blueberry plants. Don't, this is their second year in containers and I just, I still don't think I'm gonna get any berries off of them this year, but that's okay. It's all right. Let's see. Now we go on to the backyard. <laughs> you can tell that I am a mom because there's things like deflated dinosaurs sprinklers in my yard. That's real life. Um, but <laughs> here's our backyard um, planting. All the coleus that I've collected from seed from last year and started from seed again this, this spring, and they are all starting to fill out. Oh, we're starting to get flowers too. Ah, the, these double petunia, so romantic. It is a nice time of day though to catch the garden. Now here's some salvia that are definitely putting on a show still. I think this is the rocking purple salvia. They're annuals, but they're just so great because they have this, this black calyx that even when all the flowers have dropped off, they still look kind of like they have blooms on them. All right, let's see. Again, I love containers, so this is mostly a profusion of containers filled with coleus, because when you start coleus from seed, you end up with a lot of grown up coleus. But you can see how the planters, like here we got more salvia. I think this is the fuchsia, the rock and fuchsia getting ready to go again. Here's a, this is a Roman red. Again, like we're kind of between, find yourself between um, bloom cycles. This is not really where the biggest show is at the moment. Ooh, although here's a better example of the Roman red. Look at that, wow. Yeah, this is where the coleus though are taking over the show pretty well because when they started from seed, they were super tiny. Like here's some that haven't quite are still pretty little, like my chocolate cherry coleus that I started late. They start that little and then they end up like this. Pretty glorious. More of the rock and purple salvia. You can see that pretty color. More of the Roman red. And then my pansies are still, still blooming. And like technically pansies are supposed to be a cold weather flower, but even with these high temps, they still seem to just be okay. Maybe they get enough shade, um, but they're okay, even with it being that hot. Plus some random cilantro. <laughs> um, that's how I started. This particular planter threw in the, the pansies because they needed a home, and now it's kind of a good combo. More monster coleus. Look at all these different options. This is one of my dad's favorites. It has the yellow kind of cream splash along with the red. Very nice. There's an example of a plant you can start from seed and really enjoy it. Do recommend. Let's see. Oh, my strawberry planters that I repurposed to fill with the double petunia, I think lovey dovey. And then this polka dot plant It's looking real filled in. Again, that's the theme. Everything has gotten a chance to grow and fill in. Let's 
see. Snapdragons, still kind of taking their time, but they're getting there. Celosia, same deal. I do wonder if I planted these guys too, too deep into the plant bags and they're not getting enough sun. This is an experiment. Now the calendula, on the other hand, ah, mosquito. The calendula Pacific Beauty mix is starting to really take off, but it's very, I have to be careful. The dogs are rough on this one. It breaks easily. So I've lost a couple taller plants. Ah, oh, that's all right. And then the marigolds are doing awesome because marigolds always do awesome. They're just a wonderful plant for anybody to get started with. And I can see some blossoms getting ready to get started. We'll see. And some extra coleus that I needed a room, needed room for, so I threw them there. Then my jellyfish planters, as I like to call them, um, are kind of in between bloom cycles. You can see the petunias kind of have like petered out for a moment. I probably should prune them back a little bit. I know they're getting enough water, but they're just kind of in between. But the dichondra, dichondra silver falls, <laughs> has grown super long, long enough to get all tangled and need, need a visit to the salon, sort of. But I just love that draping effect. Once you've got the right plant for the right spot, it's just really easy to make it pretty. All right, let's keep going. This is the part of the garden that I'm most excited about right now, because this is where the growth is really starting to ramp up into the point where you can start eating things. Almost there. Next up, we're going to the veggie garden. I'm going to try to keep moving because the mosquitoes have definitely come out. Yay, Michigan. Oh, look at this spider. Hold on. I'm sorry. If you, if you don't like spiders, look away. Oh, look at that beauty. Oh, sorry. Sorry. As you were. Anyway. Ah, so this is where mostly the veggies are. Um, we'll start here with the scarlet lady or painted lady bean that my mom gave me. Gave me to start. It's climbed all the way up to the top by now. And it's got some beautiful, beautiful red blossoms that are just really cool. It'll be fun to watch. I'm gonna give you a little bit. Oh, come on, focus. You can do it. There we go. This is the veggie garden. This is the south facing part of my garden. It gets the most sun. So this is where I try to grow lots of tasty things in the summer. Although these two, these three are not tasty. We've got zinnias, zinnias, and then carnations back here. And I'm gonna just like not name them right now because they don't have flowers. So it's gonna be kind of hard to remember what's what, but trust me, that's that by next garden tour, I bet we'll have something to show for you there. All right, in the first plant bag, we've got cilantro. This gets the most shade. So I try to keep the cool weather things in here. Cilantro prefers it to be cool. And then we got, there we go. Got some little pea blossoms turning into peas. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you this cause I don't, there's like little, there's a little pea pod forming in there. Very exciting. Well, they didn't end up, they didn't end up climbing very much, but maybe this trellis is too wide. Hard to say. All right, my green stalk is filling up. We got some, we got some lettuce here. The basil, you can tell the basil was less happy with its life over here because basil's on the bottom tower, but it gets more excited in the sunshine. <laughs> um, the lettuce on the other hand is happier in the shade, which is kind of fun about where this green stock is. I know they make ones that you can like rotate around on wheels, but I didn't think that would do well on the mulch. Maybe next year. Strawberries are super happy. Spoiler alert, I already ate one, the first strawberry. That is my, that is my um, gift for being the gardener. But then look at this pretty one. Let's see if we can get it. Hello. There it is. And these are seascape strawberries. They should bear all season. Um, and they really seem to like the grow stock. They're doing really well. So we should have more strawberries soon. <laughs> All right, then we start to get into tomatoes. The marigolds, I always like to plant at the bottom just to make, I know it's supposed to be for pest control, but I just think they look pretty too. But 
we have, let's see if I can get in there. Can I get in there? All right, let's see. Right here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There we go, that's a little better. This is a green zebra tomato, one of my favorites. It will stay green, but it has a lovely, almost citrusy flavor. Mm, I'm excited about this. Oh, and it's got tons of blossoms, tons more tomatoes in the making. And then I know I have blossoms here on my Brandywine pink tomatoes. So that's look, they're looking very good. Oh, and then the pole beans. So pole bean is Fortex. I grew it last year and really liked the flavor. Family liked it too. And look at these babies. I mean, I'm sorry. Is there anything cuter than baby, baby veggies? in the garden. They're so cute. My volunteer lettuce from last year is still going crazy. Um, I haven't decided. It's already gone to seed, so I don't think I'm probably going to eat it, but I am enjoying just seeing how weird it looks. Um, I have some Thai basil that I planted. It grew from seed, and it seems to like this spot just fine. And I think I have some oregano and thyme that is still going, which is lovely. It got really hot and dry, so um, some of the herbs I planted here were not happy. But these guys did just fine, so that'll be nice to have some fresh herbs. <sighs> then for show is my rose tree with the licorice white, white licorice rose. But nobody's, nobody's blooming at the moment. Again, the roses kind of did their thing, and now they take a little break while they build out more growth. As you can see in the little red shoots. So they will put on another show soon. All right, but really right now it is about veggies. I think, now these were, these were some two extra tomato plants that I had that I found room for. I mean, every year I start too many, too many tomatoes from seed. It's a great problem to have. And I think, I think that these are gonna be more green zebras. They look very similar to the green zebras over there, and that just delights me to no end because, like I said, they're my favorite tomato. Oh, let's see if we can. Right here, you can see in the armpit of this tomato is a sucker, so we're gonna go ahead and take that off. Come on! Suckers are not bad, they just they suck energy from the plant that I would rather it spend on delicious tomatoes. Oh my gosh, why are we getting so out of focus? There we go. Oh, so we'll see. This one might be green zebra too. More tomatoes there. Oh my goodness. And then these are my Napa grape tomatoes. I always like to have grape tomatoes because they're great for snacking. And these days I feel like the varieties pump out a ton of tomatoes every season. So it's constant snacking. There's the little baby. There's the little baby one, looking good. And then all the marigolds underneath have really filled out. Got some really pretty colors. I'm telling you, I think every year I'm gonna start ending up with too much coleus and too much marigold as if there was any sort of such thing. Look at that, very nice. Good job, veggie right. garden. Last part I wanna show you is the driveway garden and a little bit of the front corner because that's that's where all the interesting stuff happened. Um, if you watched my gaps in the garden video part two, um, you probably will find the driveway garden view pretty familiar. The only thing that's different is that it's had, I planted some new plants there, we'll point it out, but it's had a chance to kind of recover um, and get watered. So it looks a little more put together at this point. Let's go look. All right, so here's what the driveway garden is looking like now i mean compared to june it is just like a riot of different colors and as people have been commenting it's super cheerful and i that's partly what i like because <laughs> folks walking their dogs can uh see it i can see it from my nosy neighbor nook right here <laughs> so i like having that cheerful view that i can keep an eye on um so let's see we got our hostas are blooming with that beautiful, delicate, purple, white. Now, again, like the hostas in the rose border, I inherited these with the house. 
So I don't really know what variety they are, but I do think they're pretty, so they got to stay. Um, some plants that I didn't like got booted. It's your garden, you should keep what you want and get rid of what you don't. All right, here we have some bell bellflower, campanula. This is, oh shoot, it's like purple. Wait, this is why I try to keep the plant tags. Yes, purple sensation, campanula. You know, if your garden is dense enough, you can just hide all the plant tags and have them. I don't remember them all. Here's the April night salvia that I just planted along by the May night salvia. This is my bluebird aster that you've got to pinch back. My mom says that her mom and my dad's mom, my grandma's, all said to keep pinching back the aster until 4th of July. So that is what I do. And it's a good idea because this thing is a beast. It's established. I planted it the first year we were here. So this is, I think it's third summer and it will be so full of color in the fall. Um, it's the birth flower for September. So it's kind of fitting. Although I feel like he, this one doesn't bloom until October. It's a little naughty, but that's the aster that'll bring in some color as we get closer to fall. Now, oh, my Di Dianthus is getting ready to put out new blooms, but it's pretty much quiet at the moment. Cream puff daisy just got planted and starting to look way better now that it's got some water and some soil to drink up. We've got the Happy Returns Daylilies. What I loved, I feel like they're looking a little dry, but what I thought was so cool is that some of the blossoms make these little kind of like triangles as they're opening up. I thought, boy, that's cute. Again, endlessly cheerful, this garden. Um, irises are done, but they kind of fit in with the green strappy texture of the daylilies, so I think that's gonna be good. Now, I can't hold back any longer. Here's the excitement that I have for the July garden tour, and that is that the dahlias are starting to bloom. This is a blue boy dahlia. I did try to, some years, I don't adhere to, I haven't adhered to the color scheme of the blues and golds and whitish of the perennials in my garden. But with dahlias, the thing is, they're pretty much annuals unless you decide to store down the bulbs here in zone 6B. So I can kind of swap them out every year. This year I tried to stick to the color scheme a little more than I normally do. So blue boy is a nice kind of, it's actually more of a purple if I'm being honest, but it's really hard to find true blues and flowers. It's possible, but a lot of the times they just aim into purple. But they should be, if I remember correctly, I've got blue boys, then I've got marn, which I think might be over here. Ah, mosquito. Um, which will be sort of an orangey, coppery cream. Ah, and then here in the center, although I suffered a setback because one of them rotted out, one of the bulbs rotted, but um, is Holly Hill Lemon Ice. That's hopefully this one too, Holly Hill Lemon Ice. And that's gonna be a white and yellow dahlia and I'm kind of excited about that. But I've got plenty, I see lots of, I see lots of bulbs. So that's gonna be really, oh, focus camera. I apologize, it's on me. Um, there's gonna be lots of dahlias to show soon. And then the big difference, again, from the June garden tour, I would say would be all the daisies that have opened up and all the cone flowers. So this is crazy daisy. <laughs> you can see it's got kind of a frizzly, frizzled petal. And then here are two cone flowers. I forgot I planted them so close together, but powwow white and then lemon drop. So lemon drop's one of our double, our double, um, cone flower. Sorry, got a little schmutz on my hand here. Whereas I feel like the powwow white is more of your traditional shape that you, single bloom that you imagine for cone flowers. Let's see, but look at this with the purple hosta blooms. This is my banana cream daisy. It has a slight yellow cast to it. Oh, so good. Cappuccino, Black-Eyed Susan, or Rubecchia. 
Then this is a mini Becky. That's what it was. I had to look it up. This is a mini Becky Rubeckia. Doesn't seem anything mini about it. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> and then I have one more. I think Rubeckia. This one I don't remember planting, but here it is. Um, probably Goldstrom if I had to guess, but I could be wrong. I don't have a plant tag down there to tell me any different. It's beautiful, it fits in, it gets to stay. Right, Mr. Frog? All right. All right, so the last part, you can tell we are like burn in daylight. I wanted to show you my planting here in the corner. It's near my front steps. <sighs> the best thing, the very best thing. Oh, the doges. The best thing about this part of the garden is this cone flower cranberry scoop it, or double scoop I think um, it is just an amazing combination of red and fuchsia and aging into kind of like an orange it's awesome super proud of that um, tried to surround it with a lot of cool tone plants this is um, artemisia wormwood and if anybody knows why like, it doesn't stay very frosty here. Like, usually Artemisia has more of, like, a frosty tone to it. But I have these parts that stay green. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Oh, well. Lots of, there's still lots for me to learn. Russian sage. Denim and lace. Looking nice. My little blue stem grass is starting to pick up. And, of course, one thing about daylilies lilies is that you really can't kill them. <laughs> and I thought I dug up this, uh this particular day lily, the Stella d'Oro. Stella d'Oro for the gold, um, star of gold. Uh, but it came back, but you know, I'm not mad at it. It kind of looks nice with the blue stem grass, so I'm gonna just leave it there. <sighs> Lavenders, um, sensational lavender looking nice. And then my Lavender Grosso is starting to put out a little, oh, I can't reach it, a little blossom. Just real tiny, but at least it's happy. They look happy and that's all they need to do their first year. Dianthus is looking nice and the blue fescue just popping against those uh, cherry dolce hookera corobels. That's a good look. And here is my super vista, super tunia vista snowdrift, which has filled out just as it, I have been told it would. So I've actually bought more to fill out further down the garden bed but there's not much to show there today so look at just look at this growth <laughs> it fills out spills out it's great all right let's see yeah the hook row looking nice blue fescue grass and then my little lime hydrangea oh, there we go here in the july garden tour Focus in for me, please. We've got some blooms getting ready. Um, I moved this little lime over from behind this massive Oregon grape that I have here. <laughs> this also came with the house. I feel like if it's massive, it probably is well established because it was here before I got here. Um, but it was behind, I, I planted it behind, wait, no, right here, behind a boxwood hedge that I had to get rid of. So it was in the shade on both sides, but then I got to move it over into the sun and it seems way happier with its life. So I feel good about my choices here. I wanna show you, <laughs> this plant, like I said, came with the house. This is an Oregon grape or a Mahonia. Um, I had to look it up because it was super weird. When we came here, we moved in in the spring of 2019 and it was covered in like yellow blossoms. And it really does form grapes. And I believe they are edible, but I haven't tried it. I think it's just pretty, but kind of looks like a holly. That's what I assumed it was when we bought the house, but it's a completely different creature and it's a beast. I need to prune it. There's going to be a whole other video that I need to do soon. Just pruning all the things that it's been too hot to prune. Yup. And it's still too hot, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm really proud of this spot because it's filled in quite nicely. And I think the last thing I'll show you is more salvia, of course. This is a recipe I think I probably repeat all over the place, and that's putting salvia as my thriller in the thriller 
filler spiller recipe. Um, this is, I think, blue suede, blue suede um, salvia. They're all like rocking names for this one. It's a whole theme for the annual salvia, I think, through proven winners. Um, but that's a pretty color for sure. Um, contrasting it with the red verbena. Diamond frost euphorbia, man, I feel like it keeps getting buried by everything I plant with it, so I don't think I understand it very well yet. That's okay. And then red hawk sweet potato vine. Looking good. It's all right. All right, so that's gonna do it for the July 2021 garden tour. I'm trying to back up so I'm not right up in your face. <laughs> Thanks for your patience again as I start to learn all this stuff. Um, lots of beauty in the garden, lots of stuff still to come, like a whole nother round of roses blooming um, and more power from the dahlias coming soon. So I'll try to catch that. Um, if it comes between now and the August garden tour, I don't want you to miss it. Um, anyway, thank you for watching my video. And again, if you like it, please like and subscribe so that you catch every video. Like I said, this is the most busy time of year for me when it comes to beauty in the garden. So I don't want you to miss it. All right, with that, have a great holiday weekend. Happy 4th of July. If you celebrate, um, make sure to read up on some history and learn more about um, what it all means, not just the, the shiny, happy side of it, but all of it. That's what life's about, understanding it in all of its facets, all of its beauty and all of its intensities. Ah, I feel like there's a gardening metaphor in there somewhere, but I can't find it for the moment. Anyway, thanks for joining me in my garden. Talk to you again soon. Bye.